Yo, 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 it's your friend Dinner Dog, and today we're looking at spreadsheets, baby. You better believe it. So, um, yeah, we're going to be taking a look at random items, um, in particular random weapon stats, and how it impacts gameplay, and what do you really need to, to know um, when you're going into this bad boy. So, um, this only really applies to presets and seeds that have um, item stat randomization enabled, so um, safe... Um, Adventure and casual, I believe, are the ones. The um, or if you just make your own thing on the randomizer uh, web page, but generally just stick to the presets. The um, so we're gonna go down like what are the general weapon attributes? The um, and what do we care about? And then I'm gonna tier list this, um, mostly just so that you know what's relatively good. I mean, you can have a different opinion than I do. The um, and certainly like look at the comments. There'll probably be a few different opinions down there. But um, the idea is just to say, okay, ideally you kind of want this. Now, let's be honest, because the weapon damage is randomized, you're probably just gonna use what hits the hardest in most cases, but um, but outside of that, like if you're between a couple, like what's the best one? When should you definitely menu for things? Which are some situational plays you wanna make? Like we go from there. So yeah, strap on in. This is gonna probably be a long one, but um, let's give her a go. So in terms of the general attributes, when we look at stat randomization, like the name is going to be changed, probably the the sprite's going to be different, be off colored, but the weapon description is always going to be true, and it's going to be true for everything except for the base damage. So if I see something that says um slices cleanly through enemies, I know I have the vorpal blade. I don't know how much damage it's going to do, but I know how it behaves. I get this huge hitbox. I can dual wield theoretically, although you probably shouldn't with vorpal. The, um, I can backdash cancel, which you should definitely do. All sorts of good things there. So, but I don't know how much damage it does. So we really don't care about base damage at all. So as we look through this list, the um, we're just assuming that like everything has the same base damage for better or for worse. The um, and and just taking it from there. And again, your mileage is going to depend on how much it actually does. But we're going to be looking at ideally what weapons do you get that have high damage and such like that. What isn't randomized, though, which is amazing, is special attack damage. So, um, like, the Masamune does, like, I think the special does 200 damage per hit, the um, plus your strength. And, um, and that's always going to be the case. So if you know you have that weapon, the, um, you know you've got something that hits hard. Um, really, really, really hard, regardless of what weapon um, damage it rolled. So you don't even care about that. It could be minus 30, you don't care. The special is always going to work as intended in the vanilla game, so that's very très bien. The, um, and also, some of them, including the Masamune, allow you to get invulnerable as well. So um, you could kill um, like Gallimoth, even if um, you lose the, the cheese. You can easily get through Dracula, like almost any enemy that doesn't fly, or um, like you can pretty much kill. We definitely care about movement, so um, you can't um, dash cancel with two-handed weapons in most cases, which we'll get to in a moment, but generally speaking, you can't, so we're going to be a bit slower. You can fly with thrust sword and gravity boots, so we want those. And more importantly, we can dash cancel without a shield with some weapons, and we're going to really lean into that, because um, not only, if you can dash cancel with a weapon, the um, you can also dual wield with it, which is fantastic, really fantastic. Attack speed we care about, um, because if you have something that attacks really hard, but doesn't attack very fast, you may have something better that attacks faster, you know, doesn't hit as hard. The um, double hitting is um, also very cool. So, um, and there's a, so like what that means for most weapons is if, um, in particular with swords, is if you jump in the air and you do a slash, will it hit the enemy twice? The, um, or at least have the potential to hit twice. So, which is extremely valuable against Dracula and a bunch of other bosses. The, um, the general rule of thumb I'll just point out right now is that if the sword sounds like it's playing like like a saber or something, it probably doesn't double hit. If it sounds really cool, it probably does double hit. And we'll look at all those examples. We talked about dual wielding, but dual wielding is amazing. So if you have bad weapons, it doesn't matter because if you have two bad weapons at the same time, you're probably doing okay. The um, So we always want things that dual wield. The, um, and thankfully, like, there's a number of options in the vanilla game where you could dual wield, but they're not the greatest, but because the base damage is randomized, they can be amazing. So we're going to, um, we're going to dive into those. Damage type matters, and this doesn't change, it's not randomized. So, the, um, if you have a firebrand, 
it's going to look like Firebrand when you swing it. It's going to act like Firebrand when it hits, in so much that it's going to do fire damage. So you never have to guess the element. The element is never randomized, it is always true. The um, We'll talk about Stone Sword in a moment, or when we get to it. But um, but generally speaking, the or no, the damage type is always true. Stone Sword just has a special effect on it. And then, lastly, what we really care about is consistent weapon name. So what this means is that the randomizer doesn't randomize every name. So typically, items are, or weapons are randomized within their class. So if I pick up a saber, I know I have a sword. Okay, great. The um, And specifically, I don't have a short sword because it's a standard sword. So that's very cool. But there are some swords, like the firebrand I just mentioned, and most of the elemental weapons follow this, is that the, the name is what it says it is. So when I see firebrand in the bottom of my screen, I know I have a weapon that deals fire damage, it's a standard sword, and it two hits. That tells me a lot, even though I don't know the damage, like how much base damage it has, the, um, I can still reliably say, okay, well this thing double hits, so let's give it a try. I can reliably say like it's maybe worth to menu, especially if I have like a short sword, a short sword that single hits. The, um, and I know it has a special. The Firebrand special is actually not that bad. The, um, it's not the greatest, unfortunately, because you can't cancel the animation, but, um, but it's pretty good regardless, certainly the best of the brand weapons. The, um, so the reason, so we care about that because it's giving us knowledge. The, um, and it, we're just going to spend less time in the menu. So you, what you want to avoid, especially if you're racing, is like every time you pick up a weapon, oh, let me go and see what it does, let me see what the attack power is, all that kind of stuff. You want to avoid that as much as possible. You kind of want to um, check your menu at like key moments of truth, like I'm going to fight all rocks, let's check my weapons, right? And especially in the first castle, because a lot of times your weapon's good enough in the first castle. Like there's not much um, outside of bosses that's a real threat there. So um, typically... You, you don't need to reach the menu that often, but when you know you've picked up something and you know its attributes as a result immediately without checking the menu, it, it, it's fantastic. So there's a couple examples where that is the case, and we're going to um, dive into them, and we're really going to um, prioritize those weapons. So let's um, get into it. We're going to bring up a spreadsheet. This is going to be in the, um, in the description. And we're just getting right into it. Like, what's the best weapon in the game? And P.S. It's Yasasuna. So you may be thinking, Tinder Dog, why is it Yasasuna? That's not a good weapon. But it is. It, it really is. In, in, a, in an item randomization standpoint, this is the best weapon in the game. And I know you're probably cringing, but let's look at it. You see how it's highlighted green? I highlighted every item in green that has a default name. So when you pick up Yasasuna... You have Yasasuna. Same with the Shield Rod, but we'll get to that in a moment. So why do I care if I have Yasasuna? Because immediately, I can I have a pretty decent hitbox as far as I'm concerned. I know it can be a bit jank, especially I find it's the most janky when I'm turning around and trying to hit something. But generally speaking, the Yasasuna's hitbox is better than most. At least is in my experience with it. People will disagree, and that's fine. It's just how I've experienced it. The um. So I, I know I've got a pretty good hitbox. I know I have crazy fast attack speed. I know I can backdash cancel with it. Because you definitely can. I like to call it the motorboat. It looks like a propeller going behind you. But um, I immediately get access to backdash canceling. And, and, and I can do that with a two-handed weapon. And both hands, for some reason, work to attack. You can dual wield with one weapon. Which doesn't make any sense. But it just works. Like, try it. Hit both attack buttons. You will get the, the attack out. And it's faster when you hit both. It is incredible. So you don't know what the damage is. But even if it's bad, like, it's probably worth going to, right? Like, you just, you got that backdash canceling. You can, you can double it up effectively by, du by like, dual ability inherently. It's so good. The only um, drawback to Yasasuna is because it's two-handed, you can't, um, like, have a mana prism in your other hand if you've got a duplicator. So that that's the, the one drawback in it, but that doesn't happen very often. So it is, it is by and far, the best weapon in the game. Now, you may be saying, but it's supposed to be Chrysogrim, right? And Chrysogrim is. Chrysogrim, objectively, does the best damage. And even if the attack roll is zero, so it's just your strength, it's still the best weapon because it hits so fast, right? The problem with Chrysogrim 
in so much why it's not the best in item stat randomization is I won't know I have a Chrysogrim when I pick it up. And you wouldn't believe the amount of times when someone is playing rando and they didn't realize they had a Chrysogrim. So it's great if you know you have it. Like, it's by and far on the way, like, even if the damage is low, it's probably still your best damaging weapon. So that's fantastic. You can dual wield with it, but you probably don't need to, but you can. The, um, and, uh, but the, the drawback is you cannot, um, backdash cancel with it. You can kind of do it, but it's janky. It's, it's actually slower. Don't do it. The, um, so Chrysogrim, highest damage potential by far. The, um, even though the Asasuna does have a fast attack speed and you can, um, dual wield with it, the Chrysogrim does a, a countless blades. It's not kitten. I think it hits six times, but, um, but yeah, you're dicing enemies no matter what. But then why is the Vorpal Blade number two? Well, the Vorpal Blade is like the Chrysogrim mini, but the advantage with Vorpal Blade is you can backdash cancel with it. The, um, so like, yes, it does less damage, but does it really do that less damage, right? Like, it's still really good. Like, most things are just going to get melted anyways. So it's not really a big deal. And you can backdash cancel with it. So the, the greatest thing that Vorpal Blade has is it's like the Swiss Army Knife. Although Yasasuna is kind of a Swiss Army Knife as well. But with Vorpal Blade, you, can, you have crazy damage potential, backdash canceling, and you can equip a Mana Prism in your other hand or, or anything else you want. The, um, so it's very versatile. You can dual wield with it, but generally with Vorpal Blade, it's probably just better just to focus mashing on one button. But um, if the Vorpal Blade isn't doing that much damage anyways, and like some, uh, some other weapons are damage dealing weapon, then like you can toss in a few Vorpal Blade slices in between the other one. But um, but yeah, Vorpal Blade's fantastic. You unfortunately you don't know you get it when you pick it up. But um, like so like here's how this works. This is this is how I justify my ranking of this top three here. I know I have Yasasuna when I pick it up. Therefore, it, there's just so much value there. I, I don't need to spend time in the menu. I'm objectively going to save time and I get value from the weapon immediately um, when I grab it, unless it's like a, like it does negative damage or something silly like that. The Chrysogrim does the most damage. And if you started the game and you gave me an option to pick any of the three, I would pick Vorpal Blade because it's so solid and I can backdash cancel immediately. Like, you can do the same with Yasasuna, but now both my hands are tied up. The Vorpal Blade has better range, right? So that's how I, I do it. Like, if you know you have all three, you're probably using the Crystal Grim. If you had to choose one, especially at the beginning of the game, you're probably choosing Vorpal Blade. And if you pick up Yasasuna, you immediately know you've got it. So let, let's just round out the top three of that again. Feel free to disagree. So moving along from there, Shield Rod comes up next. And um, so I put Shield Rod on a uh, better than Malblong, mainly because you know you have Shield Rod and you pick it up. Sh clubs were recently reworked so that they are randomized. And when item stat randomization was first a thing, clubs weren't randomized, so they were always vanilla. But now they are randomized. But um, the club names are not randomized. So when you pick up Shield Rod, even though it won't look like Shield Rod necessarily, it will be Shield Rod. So it's kind of better from the Malblong from that perspective because you know you have it. The... Um, and the other advantage too is when they added damage, or when sh or when rods started becoming um, randomized, like their stat randomization worked properly. The um, they do seem to get um, any kind of weapon damage across the board, which I can be wrong about. Although I just pulled one in a seed right now, I'll just pull it up. The um, so here is oh that's a holy rod, sorry, but um but let's look at this holy rod. So holy rod, a, I have thirty nine strength, and I have seventy five attack. As a result, if I was to pick it, the um, now if I was to remove this here and go to this fancy thing I made, um, this damage chart here. So with 39 strength, uh, attack of 75, the um, weapon is hitting for 36. The um, I'm likely wielding a Chrysogrim, or the other option was um, a Morn Blade. The um, now this calculator may have some flaws to it. I don't think it does, but if they do, please let me know. And I'll fix it. The um, and, and like anything in the if you go in this spreadsheet. Um, linked in the description. If there's any problems with it, let me know. I'll fix it right away. The, um, but yeah, the, um, so it's clearly it's, you're not getting 36 damage out of a club. So it's, it's randomized. The, um, within other weapons is what I mean. So that's fun. And so what that does for you is that while shield rod before by itself may not have been that great, maybe it hits like a truck, right? Who knows? 
the um so like you get a bit more value out of shield than they would have before because without the stat randomization shield rod was always bad the um at least mainly compared to other weapons but shield rod um even without a shield is um can, has the potential to be better now the um so yeah shield rod's fantastic the only drawback with shield rod is if you don't have a shield that works really great with it you're, you're, you're just single hitting damage, but um, otherwise it's good times. Whereas the Mulblong, even though you don't know you have it when you pick it up, it's it's an exceptional weapon. It attacks reasonably quickly. The um, It double hits. The um, It's everything you'd probably want out of a sword. The um, And what I like with Mulblong too, because it's such a viable weapon in itself, the um, I find I get some mileage out of the Night Shield, which acts like an attack potion if you use it. Where, like, if you were to use that with Shield Rod, you're not really getting a lot of value out of it. But with Mulblong, because it can double hit and it swings faster, the um, you can get good value out of that. Even if you, like, obviously you want, like, an Iron Shield or something like that. But in absence of having those, the, it gives you a bit more flexibility and, and gives you one more viable option. Holbane Dagger, number six. How did that happen? So why do we care about Holbane Dagger? And the reason we care about Holbein Dagger is because because Holbein Dagger is Vorpal Mini, so you can backdash cancel with Holbein Dagger, and you can dual wield with it. So it's fantastic. And like it, like it, it, even if the damage of the Holbein Dagger is like very low, if you're dual wielding anyways, it doesn't matter. Anything you use, anything you do with it, it's just gravy. The um and especially like against like enemies where you're just kind of standing beside them, crouched down. Like I don't know, like um like Medusa, or you're fighting Dracula, who's just massive, right? You're not going to miss him. The Holbein Dagger's fantastic. The um, attacks quickly, dual wield, backdash canceling. Like, it's everything that the Vorpal Blade is, just in a smaller form factor. So um, you should definitely use the Holbein Dagger if you get the opportunity. Now, technically, with anything you're using weapons to backdash cancel with, I think it's technically slower backdash canceling than with the shield. But um, unless, like, you're, like, just a god gamer at backdashing, it probably won't matter. You, you probably physically can't do it fast enough for it to make a difference. Like, we're not Tassers here, right? The, um, or, like, or unless, like, you're a top speedrunner, like, you're DB or Talag or any of those guys who can just probably make it happen really quickly. All right. Next up, Masamune. Oh, yeah. And by the way, like, the, the whole point of this is that the descriptions are on the side here, right? So, swift upward diagonal attack, whole bean dagger. Spirit sword, maul blong, right? You don't care about the shield rod. You probably know about Vorpal Blade and Chrysogrim and what those descriptions are. But um, yeah, please pay good attention to the um, the description column here because that's the value of this spreadsheet is it tells you what it does even if this name is randomized, right? It's not going to say Holbein Dagger. But when I see Swift Upward di upper Diagonal Attack, I, I know I've got a, like an exceptional weapon and it's going to do a lot for me. The um, So Masamune has its name literally in the description. But um, this bad boy... The, um, it's better than Asafune in practically every respect. The, um, it, it attacks massively. I think it's plus 200 the, um, for the special. The only thing that sucks is you can't backdash cancel and you can't like offhand a mana prism because it's two-handed. However, the, um, it hits so hard, it doesn't matter. Like All, all of your boss fights are going to melt. You literally win for free, the, um, especially against Dracula and stuff. Like If you were to perform the, um, the down-to-forward special, you can chain it uh, fast enough, or you, it, the game gives you an opportunity to chain the specials in so much that you'll never have a frame where you're vulnerable. You can just keep using the special and you'll never be able to get hit as long as the timing is there. And Masamuni doesn't take any um, MP as well. So, fantastic weapon. The um, You don't care that it's two-handed. You just want to use it and you're just going to rip everything up. Speaking of ripping it up, Girthang gets stronger with Bloodied. So, this has the special that if you're using Dark Metamorphosis or you use its down to forward to um, essentially initiate a, a short Dark Metamorphosis, you get a huge um, boost in damage. I can't remember the percentage right now, but it's it's really high. The um, So you definitely want to make use of this. You can take an item that or a weapon roll that isn't very high and, and make it bigger. You can take a you can take a gigantic weapon and make it like you can make the girthing the hardest hitting weapon in the game by far. The, um, if it gets the right rolls. So um, get stronger with Bloodied. You want to equip it, one-handed sword. It doesn't double hit when you don't have um, um, Dark Metamorphosis on, but it does when you do. It, like The hitbox gets bigger, and, and it's fantastic. So Girthang, great weapon. Absolutely want to use it. And then um, lastly here, although I should just... Oh, it won't matter here. I'll do it afterwards. But Chakram and Rune Sword are going to round out the... Um, 
the, the S tier here. The, um, and the reason why is just dual wielding. So they're not the most hardest hitting weapons in the game sometimes, like in the um, in vanilla, but in rando, they, they can be the best hard hitting weapon. And you always have, um, you can always dual wield with them. So you can you can use this with a Girthung, for instance, and just get massive damage. I put the Chakram higher than the Rune Sword because the Chakram, you get two of them in your hand. Like literally, you can throw it twice. The um, so that's gigantic damage potential. I've I've actually dual wielded Chakrams where I had four in my hand at some times, and I just melted everything. The um, so that's the beauty of them. And the other piece with the throwables is that there's only three throwable weapons in the game. So, Shocker, Moon Sword, and Heaven Sword, which we'll get to. So, there's only three sprites it could be. So, when you ever, and like one of them looks like Chrysogrim, right? So, if you see a throwable weapon sprite, you always want to grab it. Because there's like a 66% chance, or, cha or no, if you see a throwable sprite, you know it's one of the three, for sure. The, um, and it's just fantastic. The, um, you always want one of these. The um, you can outrange Akhmadon. again. They're great against Dracula, but finish the game out. The um, it's like arguably I'd say like a Chakram's way better than like like downing an attack potion or something like that. The um, regardless, even if it doesn't do that high of attack, the um, it, it's fantastic. So use them, abuse them. They're good times. So let's um, let's clear these. I'm just gonna go to the next one. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some special use cases here. So you'll see here that the Obsidian Sword is here, and it's S tier. It's only S tier pre-flight. So if you don't have flight, then any of the the, um, the Thrust Swords can give you um, flight with Gravity Boots, or um, you can use it to initiate a dive kick off of a candle to get out of logic to get into the Coliseum, all that good stuff. I put them in the order they, they are in because the Obsidian Sword special hits the hardest. I think it's 60 something. The um, so even if the damage with the sword itself is low, the special is still high. You can utilize that really effectively um, against uh, doppelganger 10 because it doesn't really matter how fast you swing against Dop 10. He only takes one hit and then goes into hit recovery and can't be um, damaged again until he finishes hit recovery. So um, so it's it doesn't matter. Just hit him as hard as you can. The, um, and then it goes down the list here is why Hander, Flamberge, Claymore as being the, um, the, like the dam or looking at strictly their damage from the sword specials and S stock at the bottom, just because X stock is, is really awkward to use, but, um, you still want it if you don't have flight, the, um, it can really open up a lot of options for you there. So lastly, there's one more S tier here, um, or I put it at the bottom. All right, let's just talk about it right now. So some special use cases. The um, Jewel Sword and Stone Sword. So you'll notice they're both highlighted here. So when you pick up either of these, you have it in your inventory. So um, with Jewel Sword, it's like the best weapon you can get if you're before getting to the shop and you don't have any money. The, um, the greatest thing that's out of your control is getting $500 to give to the librarian to potentially get a um, uh, progression relic from them. The, um, or you can get library cards or a better sword or all this kind of stuff. The, um, so if you haven't got to the library yet and you don't have money and you probably won't, the um, you you want the dual sword. You want to equip it, even dual hit, wield it. So like if you run into like use your like base weapon for killing bigger enemies and then use the dual sword just to to take on like the the guys you're gonna one hit anyways. The um, it saves so much time. The um, if you get stuck in the library and you have to grind for money, it's completely out of your control. You're just literally just at the mercy of the random drop table or the um, common drop table. The, um, and like the most you're going to get is $100 at a time, and that's fairly rare in itself. The, um, you just save time with Jewel Sword. The, um, it's fantastic, and when you see that icon come up, you know you have it. You can reliably just say, I'm menuing now, I'm putting the Jewel Sword on, I'm getting more money. The, um, so, get mint. Like, literally, the, um, like, like the best weapon in the game if you don't have money in your, in your before the library. Stone Sword is just, it's fantastic against Doppelganger. The, um, and you could say the same for um, Medusa Shield, although I'm not really covering Medusa Shield in this tier list. But um, and you know you have it when you pick it up, which is again fantastic. What you'll notice here is that like these are both short swords, and like Holbein Dagger was a short sword. Like there's a lot of good short sword options. Like some of them are trash, but um, there's a lot of really uh, good bangers in the short sword um, category. 
but yeah, like if you hit um, Doppelganger with with Stone Sword, the um, he will turn into stone. You can hit him for free. He doesn't enter hit recovery the same as you would um, without it. And um, it, you you save tons of time on this. So especially against Dop Forty, which the fight can be slightly more tricky if you're not um, completely f familiar or comfortable with the the setup on that. The um, the only thing you have to say with Stone Sword is that there's two separate things going on with Stone Sword in the vanilla game. So it hits with the stone element, and that element isn't that great. The um, It doesn't really hit things harder, or um, and it's, I think in one case it does less damage. The um, but And it has like a freeze effect. They're not one and the same. So in randomizer, the freeze effect is randomly given to another weapon. So just because you have stone sword doesn't mean that you'll freeze enemies in place with the exception of doppelganger because he just behaves like Alucard does. So you hit him with stone, turns to stone, just like the Medusa heads make you turn into stone when you're playing in the clock tower and stuff like that. The um, So yeah. And it's better than a stopwatch. You don't have to manage the sub weapon. The, um, so it's easier to just equip it rather than trying to like re-pick up the stopwatch every time you accidentally pick up a different sub weapon and have enough hearts, etc. Or, or just being able to ignore the, the, the cube of Zoe because you know you've got a stone sword and you have no other reason for um, for sub weapons if you especially if you're hitting really hard. Alright, so let's let's get out of here then. So we've done the special cases, we've looked at the best weapons, we've looked at the the the, the pre-flight and pre-library, all that kind of stuff. Let's just dive into like what are the the solid weapons here so a tier is the weapon double hits and has other benefits so um so again double hitting is you jump in the air you slash and if the enemy is big enough the um you'll hit them twice it'll be like T -t -t -t, and then um you, it damages them twice it's a really cool effect the um it's fantastic the um fist of Tolkis is an exception it doesn't double hit actually no it does double hit never mind if you're, you're close enough on the ground anyways let's just jump into it so asafune fantastic weapon the um the, the, the special isn't as good as Masamune, but it's it's still really good. The, um, the attack plus 130 is probably going to have damage in that you have. The um, So it's great. And even against um, enemies like Succubus, if you do the back to back then forward attack, so it's just like the same motion you do with a Thrust Sword, it still does this like, it's not a flurry, but it looks like a flurry. And um, it's plus 100, so it's still great. You should definitely do that. The um, so it's it's great offensively. It gives you invulnerability through the um, the down to forward special. The only disadvantage with it is it's two handed, so you can't back dash cancel. So it's kind of annoying or have like what you call it um, mana prisms attached, all that kind of stuff. But otherwise, fantastic weapon. You want it. It's good times. Talkus is another fantastic one. You've got to be able to be comfortable with um, like punching things. But um, with all punches, you can, or almost all punches, you can double hit, which is great. The um, the air, or you can use the back to forward special, which does work in midair, and you'll freeze you in midair, unlike the um, the iron fist we'll talk about later. The um, which will do essentially like an e Honda kind of like thousand punch like move. The um, it's fantastic. It hits for plus seventy regardless of the weapon's damage. The um, there is a fireball. The um, but I I don't. No, I, I might be wrong about this, but um, I don't think the fireball is actually fire, but I could be wrong. I can't remember. The um, and it's probably gonna hit too hard for me to use in the save file I have right now. But um, so we'll forget about that. If it if you find out it's fire damage, let me know. I'll update this. But um, but yeah, it's it's still fantastic. The um, if you need to outrange something, if you get in trouble, the um, the air sp or the the thousand hit is fantastic against everything, and you can use it in midair. So again, bees and death, you can just clobber them really quickly. It's fantastic. Um, Elucard Sword, also fantastic for every reason. It's fantastic in the base game. Having the attack plus 50 is nice. It offers invulnerability. It attacks very quickly. It double hits. Fantastic. Mother's Family Heirloom. Take mom up on that. Grab it up and make it happen. Marcel, the powerful Sword of Flame. Unfortunately, unlike the other... Um, um, brand weapons. It doesn't have a default name, but um, it hits so many times. I think it hits, yeah, it hits four times. The only thing that sucks with Marcel is that it sucks against Dracula because it's fire damage. The um, So it's kind of like a two-hitting weapon because fire is going to cut your damage in half, but it's going to do that before it takes defense into consideration. So it, it's not the greatest, but otherwise, outside of fighting Dracula, it's an absolute beast. The um, I what. 
I kind of felt like putting Marcel a bit further down because you can't really beat the game effectively with it, but you can beat Shaft really effectively with it, and it carries you through like pretty much the entire rest of the game. Like the only other thing that's like like resisting fire a lot is Cerberus, who gets healed off of it. But like, who cares? You can punch Cerberus; he's not really a big deal. You'll probably have another option. And then I got Heaven Sword, and Heaven Sword is absolutely a tier. It's awkward to use, which is why it's not. I didn't put it the highest. The um, and people probably would have murdered me for putting it in S tier because some people hate this weapon, and I kind of get why they do. But it's dual wielding. You you just it's just bonus damage when you when you when you need it. The um and against Dracula, it's free. It's it's great. It, if you're fighting Akhmadon, it can be really useful, especially if like you're you're getting beat up or you have low defense. So you, you absolutely want it, really any of the throwable equipment, you want them 100% of the time, every time. You don't care how much it hits for, you just want it in your inventory and you'll break it out um, probably later in the game. Or, or specifically, you're going to break it out against Shaft and Dracula 100% of the time, the, um, unless you're already using the two-handed weapon that, that just bangs. So then, Iron Fist, so this is the one, so it's not as um, obvious, but owned by Karate Master is the one you want. So just like think again, like this one has, it's a down to forward this time to do the special, which is like the E Honda thing. And just think, okay, E Honda's a martial artist. Karate's a martial art. E Honda's a master. Like you want this thing. The, um, so it, it is really cool. The, um, the, the special, um, like, and the Tolkis does the same thing. You can cancel it. So unlike like something like the Werebane or, um, the rapier where you can't cancel you're kind of just stuck in place you can cancel the iron fist just press the direction after you've started it the um it, it's fantastic if you're if you're comfortable with, with punching range the um you're you're in you're in for a good time with the iron fist like plus 40 is pretty damn good it's not the greatest with the special but this it hits so many times you it doesn't have the versatility because you can't do it in the air but it's still great against a number of bosses. You're just gonna you're gonna melt them. Elucart is high up here. Resembles Family Sword. The only thing that Elucart doesn't have for it is the special. It still attacks fast. It still double hits. Like yes, in the vanilla game it's shit, but it doesn't matter because the damage is randomized anyway. So Elucart gets a huge buff in um in this set. The uh, the Basilard the um is also a good time. Um, actually, it's the best time. So, let's talk about Basilard for a moment, alright? So, usually you get in the beginning of the game, if you go out of your way to get it, and it's bad. But, it's this little knife, and it attacks really, really, really fast. And, it can have really, really, really high damage. The, um, and so the trick with this is that the description says basic short sword. When you see basic, think B. Think Basilard. It's fantastic. I love Basilard. The, um, if it says standard short sword, then you're just dealing with short sword. The, um, so that's a problem. But otherwise, the Basilard is great times. It's always worth your time. It's a lot of fun, especially when it hits hard. You'll just have a great time just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like slicing the guy like a million times. Same thing with Combat Dagger. It, it, it can, so like you're going to be saying, well, Combat Dagger is not that great. It's got a bit more range, but like it does like a really fast um, like slash. And then it does a, like a horizontal slash. Which is slow, but the but the cool thing with the combat dagger and like you know when you have it because it says combat dagger in the description, um, is that if you hold forward while attacking, you'll also get the same just um, attack every time. You won't get the horizontal slash. The um, and um, so you can attack pretty much just as fast with a bit of extra work. And um, if you hold out a shield at the same time, you can also get the fast attack. Although if you mash it too quickly you will get the secondary slash but if you have a nice pace to it combat dagger can be fantastic especially if it hits really hard again like these are short swords there's so many good short swords you you definitely want to take a look at those so i, I should say here with both of these they don't double hit themselves but um you attack so fast it doesn't matter just just go to town now what does double hit are um, are some of these bad boys here so a lot of these, actually the Balladur doesn't double hit. This is in the wrong, um, so Harper, I got, this is a problem here. So Harper should be like that. Balladur is, is in the wrong tier. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't work. Like this. I actually just confirmed it before I ran with this. So consider this a B tier item, the Badalair. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I always do. I always say Balladur, which is clearly wrong. But Badalair is um, where it's at. 
the um so let's just ignore this one for now if anything we'll just do um we'll do one of these it's not there anymore just ignore it the um so holy sword you know you have it when you pick it up it says holy sword a lot of the elemental weapons do um so it double hits and it does holy element which is fantastic the um and you're in for a good time so you you it's excellent you can reliably menu to it and um and see what it is the um it's good times same with the ice brand the um no bosses um are strong against ice um cerberus is weak to it but um so ice brand's fantastic it's really good the um so again double hitting ice is a good element you know you have it when you pick it up the um arguably graham and harper are just as good and same as dark blade so consider these three essentially the same the um and again we got the the, the battler out of there but um so graham harper and dark blade they all double hit they all do cut damage even the dark blade the um so it's 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 it just says forged by elves which doesn't isn't a great description but if you see dark blade you know you have it if you don't see dark blade and you see forged by elves it's luminous which isn't as good the um but they all double hit and they all have like everything else is standard so again you can reliably go to your menu i have gram let's go pay, let's go check the gram out it double hits so there's a lot of good potential there like it's worth menuing for those rather than menuing for some other run-of-the-mill um, um weapon name like if it says morton blade because unfortunately morton blade doesn't get its um its own name but it does double hit and it heals you right you won't know this until you menu for it and so when you see feeds upon enemy souls you've got a great option defensively it's fantastic it's going to do uh, and otherwise it's going to do the same thing as the other um slashing weapons here or the cut weapons here so the graham harper and dark blade with the additional bonus that it heals you the only reason it's not higher is because you don't know you have it when you pick it up again we're, we're looking at item stat randomization not what is available in the vanilla game firebrand and thunderbrand come up in the rear for these so again you do know you have them when you pick them up again that's why they're highlighted green the um so fire is bad against Dracula, but it's not bad against other things like Aquamadon. It does great against, right? The um, the special is definitely the best special of all the brands. It's like these eight fireballs accumulate around you, and each of those have their own hitbox and can hit separately. So especially against Dracula, you can get a lot of hits in. But because it's so slow, it's not really worth your time. But it can be useful in a pinch in, in some situations. But um, but yeah, the um, fire is not great against Dracula. It's not great against some bosses, but it is great against others. So tomato, tomato. Whereas the thunder brand is the worst of the brand weapons. The, um, the lightning is bad. Cre things are immune to it, like creature, drac, and hippo are, um, are are resistant. So it's good for most of the game, but there's there's times you're going to have to put it away. And then lastly, the Muramasa. So the deal with the Muramasa and why it's so good is that um, it has a huge hitbox. The um, the only problem with it is that if your attack is below 30, so that's the baseline damage plus your strength, you actually don't get the bigger hitbox for whatever reason. The um, But you do get constant dark metamorphosis, so you'll always heal against enemies that bleed, which is great. And it does curse damage, which can be kind of cool. The um, But do note that Aquamadon is immune to curse, so it's bad against him. The um, Muramasa has an inherent system where it gets better through the game. The um, but that's not really that good. So like, I, I'm not going to go into the formula because it's kind of convoluted. But um, essentially, like, you would have to steal blood from an enemy. I believe it's eleven times if your damage was one for it to gain one extra damage, and it gets exponentially higher every time after that so it'll, it'll never be worth it to level this up in a randomizer race the um if it hits hard when you pick it up it can be useful because if it hits so hard and it gives you some defense with the the blood steel the um cursing can be okay against doppelganger but you probably aren't and really in the threat against doppelganger anyways the um so it is what it is but um but it is still really good it has other benefits that's why it's in the a tier the um all right Moving on to B, and this is where I'd put the uh, the battle layer, but um, I messed up my uh, thing here. I'll fix that afterwards. Oh, I also got to get rid of A tier. So these are weapons that double hit, but they don't have the same advantages. So like Luminous, Sword of Hador. So if you see Forged by Elves and it doesn't say Dark Blade, you've got Luminous. 
sort of Hador is good. Again, it's just like Graham, except you don't know you have it when you pick it up, so it kind of sucks. You have to go into the menu and read the description. But again, like remember when I talked off the top, I said if it sounds cool, it probably double hits. Like look at this sword. It's forged by elves. That doesn't sound like an off-the-shelf weapon. House of Hador heirloom, right? Like that doesn't sound like an off-the-shelf weapon. Very cool, right? The um, knuckle duster and jeweled um, knuckle both double hit as well. The, um, so if you get right in there, you'll get double hits, and you, you do that with any fist weapon practically, as long as you're close enough, you, even on the ground, so it can be really useful against some enemies like um, Medusa, or, um, or um, what was the other guy I was going to say? That doesn't matter. Well, like Cerberus maybe if you get close enough, but that's probably a bit um, tough. Um, Werebane doesn't double hit, but it does have the flurry. Flurries, um, like sword flurries are generally bad because you can't cancel them. But um, but at plus forty for every hit, it's definitely worth it while. The um, so it's it, you can justify taking it over the the two swords we'll talk about um below, the um, and it's better than rapier. Rapier only gets um plus fifteen, so it's usually not worth it. But plus forty is you're you're getting some serious damage out of that, even if the baseline damage is low. Terminus double hits, but poison's not great. Like, you can't use it against Dracula, and also it doesn't have the benefit of it being, um, like, you know you have it, even though it is an elemental weapon, so it's bad. And Mormagill is just worse. The, um, the name is randomized, even, again, if it's elemental. The um, dark damage is bad damage. The, um, there's so many things that resist it or even heal off of it. The, um, so, yeah, you don't really want to use the McGill unless you don't, unless you have to, but it does double hit, right? So you could really get good potential out of it, but you just got to be ready to, um, to, um, to switch off of it. Um, so if you hear, like, um, you'll probably know the sound effect when, um, something guards against damage, like, like, like tink, tink, right? And then, but, and if it's healing an enemy, you won't even hear, like, it hitting, I don't believe. I think it just, like, it sounds like you're slashing through nothing. The, um... So just be on the lookout for that. But otherwise, Mormagill's bad. It's it's good against killing Richter, and we don't want to do that. Alrighty, so let's start going into more of the weapons we don't really want to use most of the time because they don't double hit. But we're gonna have some flails up here first. So flails are cool. The um actually star flail should be um should have this, I believe star flail should be um random name. Um we can check that right now. Let's see here. Star Flail, yeah, Flail of Spike Balls, yeah, so in my game, it's not, ran the name is not randomized, you know, the sprite is. So Star Flail is really cool because the, it, like, it doesn't double hit, like, none of the rod weapons will, but um, it does have a really fast attack. It does have a back-to-forward special that deals your your strength plus 35, which can be really cool against Doppelganger, or, like, if you if it just rolls low and you need something, you can you can still use it. The M gets some, um, some value out of it, so it's fantastic. Holy Rod, same thing, except that its attack um, special isn't as strong, but um, but its attack speed is fantastic. Holy is a great um, attribute to have, so if you if you have to fight Aquadon, it's great. The um, otherwise, like it's it doesn't double hit, so it's if you gotta hit if you gotta fight an enemy in the air, it's not fun. The um, and rounding out these rod weapons is the Moon Rod because the special can be pretty cool. The, the down to forward sends out all these um, crescent moons. They only do your strength plus 35, but they can be very useful, the, um, especially in the beginning of the game. The, um, it, like, you can still dash with it, so it's cool. Like, I don't know why I wrote that there. It's, it doesn't have too many range. I can care. So that, that's weird. Anyway, so old, so yeah, we can just, um, let's just do this. Go. So, um, yeah, Moonrod doesn't attack as fast as the other ones, but the special can be useful, and it's all good. Otherwise, uh, Moonrod essentially works like a lot of the, um, the swords we'll see below, the, um, and we know the name when we see it. Otherwise, um, the next up here are the, are the, um, the Thrust Swords minus S-Stock. Um, you usually know you have them just because you swing it, and you can see you've got it, like the Obsidian's the darker one, for instance, Flame Burge is orange, but um, you can see it here. Obsidian and Flame Bridge are fairly obvious. If you see German two-handed sword, then you've got um, this Y-hander, the Claymore says Scotch two-handed sword, and I believe the S-Stock also says German thrust sword. So you gotta look out for the two-handed, that's when you know you have this Y-hander. Um, it's a good time. Then again, like these are really great against Doppelganger because they have a really hard-hitting special, so you want to make use of those there. Katana's next. Katana doesn't 
double hit and four tree, but does have a special, um, which gives it plus 50, so it keeps it at, like, the bottom tier, because you have to two-hand it, just like the other ones, but, um, but it's fun times. And now we have Blue Knuckles, and honestly, Blue Knuckles should probably be higher on this list, and I know you're saying, what do you mean Blue Knuckles is higher on this list? This weapon is trash! And it is, but you can dual wield with it. I literally have used this against Dracula. The um, it hit for eighty, and um, it's slow. It's awkward, but it doesn't matter against Dracula, or even like you could justify using it against Shaft as long as you're using something else. You only want Blue Knuckles for its dual wielding capabilities. The attack animation sucks. The um, you can move while you're attacking if you just have it by itself. So like it's. Not horrible in the in the intro. If you get close enough to the wargs, you can just kind of uppercut them and they're good to go. But um, but that's how that bad boy works there. The um, and then we've got a whole bunch of weapons here. They're all ranked ten here. So all these weapons here are essentially the same. The um, so they're all kind of just they they're standard sort of attack with the exception of clubs. Obviously, a club attack. The um, they all single hit. They're bad. The um, they're all the same, and that's what I was saying. Like these all look kind of like off the shelf. Like maybe you can say ivory handled hunting sword, but like ivory's banned, right? Like you know, don't be a poacher, right? The um, don't be an ivory dealer. The uh, otherwise, they all sound pretty simple. So guess what they are. The um, so that's an easy way to remember those descriptions there. The um, if it sounds bad, it probably is, and just move on from there. The um, morning star and mace, you know, you have them, but you don't really want to have this anyways. The only thing that is cool, again, with these is that Axe Knights are weak to hit in the beginning of the game, so you could use it. But um, in the library, a lot of things are strong against hit, in particular the books. So um, it can really become a bad time. So it is what it is. And rounding out the last tier here is Sword of Dawn. The, um, again, it the range is great. The special is detrimental. Like, it's just annoying. You can't dash cancel. It doesn't have anything else. Like, the katana kind of stinks too, but like, at least it has a special attack that can do something for you. The Sword of Dawn is just a meme. But um, if it hits hard, you want to use it. The range is great. But um, it, it's, it's just dependent on the range. Nothing of the um, the inherent value of the weapon outside of its damage is is that useful. In, in, but the special, it's actually just a, a time sink. So now we got D tier where it has a bunch of negatives, usually range. So Shotel's at the top of this, and it has an interesting feature, the Shotel. So, and it's hard to remember, like, a, like, the, like the curved sword is probably the, the piece you want to look at, like the Abyssian, the, um, might be hard to remember. But, um, here's the deal. It has a down to forward special. It hits for 20 plus your strength, it's probably going to hit at least twice. You kind of throw the sword out, you get a bit of range, but it's not really that great. But the cool thing about it is that while the sword is flying in the air, for some reason the game gives you access back to your fist, so you can punch while the sword is out. So like, it's better than nothing. The um, like you could lay on some extra damage against like Cerberus and stuff like that. Like I find it's good for um, like Cerberus or Medusa, where you're generally going to be in a crouched position, but you've got to move forward. So I'll move forward by doing the down to forward motion. That throws out the Chotel, and then I'll just start throwing my fists out at the same time to get some extra damage. But generally, it's a bad time. The um, so it's not good. The hitbox is awful. Like it, it looks like a dental pick. It's not fun. Um, Tearfine is is bad. Like it um. It's kind of like it's just like a single hitting sword. It's not as bad as um, the the tier fiend in the game or in the vanilla game because you do get like weapon randomization, so like it can hit harder. So it's not going to be like negative thirty, but like it's doing curse damage. Curse isn't really a big deal, so like it's not great. The um, so you're, again, it's just you're, any of these weapons you're just using it for it's in, it, the damage has been randomized to. Um, rapier the the Hitbox sucks, the flurry stinks because he locks you in, in place and you know, it's only plus 15. Stone sword, um, like stone damage isn't beneficial. The um, It probably doesn't have the freezing effect because it's randomized for the things. And again, stone sword is um, is short, so it doesn't hit very hard or it doesn't hit very far. Like it's um, it's range stinks. The, um, so use it as it does. Then short sword, the common short sword, that's where it's at. The um, So this is not the... the Basilard, if you see basic short sword, you definitely want to equip it. It's so good. 
The uh, and then I, so I put Jewel Sword down here because if you're not using it to get money for the library, like you're literally turning potential item drops into probably Zircon level cash, right? The um and the sword itself sucks. So the um it's a bad time. It, it can be the best weapon in the game. Or it can prevent you from getting the best weapon in the game, depending on the context that you use it with. So, um, yeah, Jeweled Sword stinks. Outside of just getting money. Then there's Great Sword. And so Great Sword is, is kind of cool. Like, it's a... Like, it can work. But the problem with Great Sword is that if you are um, in a ducked position and you um, you slash, his it, the attack takes forever. So you're really vulnerable and you just feel so slow. You also can't... Um, backdash cancel it's a bad time but if it hits hard go for it for sure like you just need to be aware of what it does so it has like potentially more than the Shotel if it hits like a truck but generally speaking great swords bad s dock is just terrible um it can't hit grounded enemies um so that's bad nunchaku is practically trash the um adult, again you're seeing a lot of two-handed weapons here the um they're just bad the um so not fun i've used nunchaku maybe once because i think it hit for like over 70 but um again like you're kind of saying to yourself while you're using it or like gosh i really wish i had sign else um and then let's go to the final tier the bad things things you just want to avoid tekken mitsu is a bad weapon so it's like a the bamboo sword here and um it's short range it doesn't have a diagonal attack the um it, and like it's short range for a two-handed weapon gross right same with red rust it's bad the um curse damage isn't really enough to use it like it's curse damage itself like cursing doppelganger doesn't really matter it's not really a big deal so um i i wouldn't even use it even if i was going against doppelganger i just keep my fist out the um unless it hits like a truck but even then like it, the fight can go so poorly because it randomly fails that it's a, it's a problem so Generally avoid the rusty red sword. Sword familiar is in the game, and it's down here because, like um, the vanilla game, you must have sword card, and it has to be like level fifty to be usable. The um, unfortunately, it's not randomized in the random pool. Otherwise, it'd be great because sword familiar has a default name. It double hits like a standard sword, so it's like using Graham. So this had the potential to be in like a tier, but because you'll never level up sword card enough to make it usable, um, it's not good. And we threw Karma Coin in here because, like, I love use weapons, I really do, but, like, it's really hard to justify using Karma Coin. If you get the heal effect, it could be cool, but it takes so long for it to come out that um, you're pretty much just desperation. Like, you can you can reliably pass on Karma Coin every time you see it. I know I'm not looking at the other throwables in this tier list, but we had to show some disrespect to the Karma Coin. It, it's just for gambling on DV stream, that's pretty much it. The, um, so we got through all of them, like, like 77 weapons, because Karma Coin doesn't really count, and I have a, a thing at the top here. Actually, no less than that, because I, um, here we can find this out, because I duplicated some of them. So let's just say, select all, take away this, and take away this, and hit OK. How many bad boys of these do we have? And will this give me a count? It should. Um, yeah, 72 weapons, yay! So yeah, so do you need to memorize all of these things? You don't. If you're going to memorize things, focus on the ones that you just know the, the name is what it says it is. And maybe a couple of like the S tier. Like you definitely need to know like what Malblong is, like Spirit Sword, Swift Upper Diagonal Tax, Masamune Katana. All those are fantastic. The rest of them, like you'll know, right? Like you'll use it, it'll be bad. So you'll just look at the um, the damage for the most part, but sometimes it makes sense to make sure you're taking a look at the description and giving it a go. Otherwise, this video is probably far too long. So we'll leave it at that. Um, so feel free to share your opinions or any screw ups I've had in the description. The um, I'll pin top, I'll, I'll pin a comment with all my screw ups in it as always. And otherwise, I hope you enjoy this. Like, I, I honestly feel that random items are, um, are a really a cool thing in the randomizer you just get so many different options where like things that the basilard would be trash but then they're so amazing sometimes that it, it's really satisfying you can really be creative with it otherwise we'll see you in some racing so cheers take it easy